God is calling. Say it with me. God is calling. Say it again. God is calling. Do you believe it? I know he's calling, and I have not been more excited about being anywhere this entire year but here today. How many know God is already moving? Man, I got to just say thank you. A pastor Heath and Alicia and CJ and the team and Jason and Chris, they have put this together. We thought we might get like 50 students here and they put out the word and God is up to something over 200 here today. Somebody give the Lord a shout. But can we thank the Corrales family and the entire team? You guys are amazing. If, if you don't know, uh, Pastor Heath is a giant Boomer Sooner fan, and he married a Nebraska Cornhusker, and I asked them to put this on the calendar, and they put it on the OU Nebraska game. These are amazing leaders. Give it up for them again. A whole bunch of people I need to say hi to, but my time is short. My wife is here, and uh, she drives me all around Oklahoma while I respond to your emails. Faith, would you stand back there? Uh, there's my wife, Faith. And some of you came a long ways. How many drove more than an hour today to get here this morning? Look at this. How many drove more than two hours to get here? Give these amazing people a hand. But I've got someone in the room that flew halfway around the planet to be here, Pastor Brian Kelly from Ireland. Would you stand up? Pastor Brian is in the house. We love you. Thanks for being here. You've got to hang around him today. I wore my shirt for, for my friend Brian, and some of you might be called to Dublin today. How many know that? Everybody say, God is calling. God is calling. This morning, I just want to ask you three questions related to that truth, that God is calling. He's calling today, and many of you have already felt that call. On my right here is a phone. Uh, how, many, how, many, how many recognize that as a phone? I, I took this to a children's ministry area, and I said, what is this? And they said, is it a calculator? Is it a clock? They had no idea. So I'm old enough, Pastor Phil, that this is how we communicated. When we wanted to call someone, we got out the rotary phone, and it took a long time, especially if there was a nine in the number. Any 17-year-olds in the house? Any 17-year-olds? When I was 17 years old, I got a job at a bank. I had delivered newspapers. Do you even know what that is? I had delivered newspapers, and then I'd worked at an amusement park, and then I got a job at the bank. And in the bank, there was a vault, a very large vault, a safe, and it was very secure. And when it was locked up every evening, there was no, it was airtight. There was no oxygen. Uh, it, would, it would evaporate quickly. And so in order to save someone's life, if they got stuck in the vault, this phone was placed, it was wired, hardwired, in the safe so that if people got caught in the safe and oxygen was exiting the room, then you could call and get help. That's why it looks like the bat phone, right? From Commissioner Gordon to the bat cave, right? Okay, man, I'm just too old right now. <laughs> so they, uh, they, uh, the bank got bought out, and uh, it's now a museum. And so my friend was converting the bank, and he said, you want anything as a memento since you worked here? I said, yeah, I want the phone in the vault. And so this is my, it sets in my office to remind me that there is a world out there that's not being deprived of oxygen, but they are locked in a culture where they are losing hope. Hopelessness abounds everywhere, at your schools, in your neighborhoods, across the street, around the world. There is an epidemic of hopelessness, and you and I know the answer for hopelessness, for hope is only found in the name of Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. I believe that God has given you the number, it's John 3.16, to share with those who have no hope. God is calling you to something supernatural, something bigger than yourselves, something that you cannot even imagine, somewhere serving in the kingdom of God. And there is nothing more fulfilling than serving God and answering his call. Everybody say, God is, God is calling. 
Do you all ever even answer the phone? I promise you, some of you are going to come up to me someday and say, hey, Pastor D, would you marry us? But we would like for you to allow us to text our vows to each other because we've never even spoken to each other. We've only communicated via Instagram messaging. Anybody in the room never, never been on a phone call, actually? Are you willing to admit this? Okay, no one's willing to admit it. Can I give you a word from the Lord? When your parents call, would you pick up the phone? Okay, all the parents said amen. Everybody say, God is calling. And I'm big on memorizing scriptures. I just want you to memorize three, ver- three words. Uh, I'm going to be easy on you. Uh, from 1 Samuel chapter 3, those three words are this. Here I am. Everybody say, here I am. Here I am. Man, when, you, when the phone does ring and you do pick up, uh, you know, if it's your parents, you usually say, I promise I'm coming home. I'm not, I'm gonna, I got caught behind a train. I'm not going to be too late, you know? So you, that's the answer. You know, if you're Obi-Wan Kenobi, you pick up the phone. Well, hello there, right? Yeah. <laughs> How do you answer the phone? How do you answer when someone calls. How about when that person that you kind of got a crush on calls, yeah, or texts? You know, you kind of clear your throat because you kind of want to sound good, right? You want to sound a little lower, guys. You want to make sure you're singing bass on those days. And if somebody's important, if a, if a job offer is coming or you get something from your youth pastor and you want to, how do you answer the phone? How do you answer when God is calling? I believe there's three words, and it's this. Here I am. If God's calling you today, I want you just to stand up all over this place, and I want us to say these words together. Why don't you stand up if you feel God's calling? Everybody say, here I am. Say it with me. Here I am. Say it one more time. Here I am. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, would you help us just for the next few moments have an on-ramp to this most amazing day? We have powerful leaders, missionaries, rural pastors, uh, city pastors, evangelists. We have so youth pastors, children's pastors, worship pastors have come here to just encourage and invest in this generation. I believe with all my heart that the hope of Oklahoma is in this room right now. And I just pray, God, that your spirit would confirm and affirm, would empower them today, would equip them, would spirit baptize them today. And I pray that no one would leave the same, but this would be the best day of every student's life that came. In Jesus' name we pray. Turn to your neighbor and say, here I am. You may be seated. I'm just going to ask you three questions. God is calling. Here's the first one. I know God is calling are you answering? God is calling. He's calling today. He's always been calling. Are you answering? I know there's a little thing, you don't even know what it is. It's called caller ID. Like that's what shows up who's calling on their phone when you get it, right? When I was growing up, we didn't have that. So it could be the person you didn't like. It could be the person that you did like. You just had to answer the phone and see who was there. But I promise you, God is calling. Are you answering? Now, how many would want to pick up if Chuck Norris was calling? I've got a little slide on the screen here with uh, Chuck there. There's only two options if Chuck Norris is calling, and that's either you answer or you answer, right? How many know if Chuck Norris is here or God is up here? And so if God is calling, you better be answering. I want to go to 1 Samuel. Most of you know the story, precious lady in chapter 1. She can't have kids, and so she prays, Lord, would you give me a kid, and I'll dedicate him to you. His name's Samuel. God answers. When you pray, God always answers. Samuel comes. She dedicates him to the Lord, places him in the temple, and he becomes an incredible voice of God because God called him in the entire Old Testament as a prophet. So I just want to to go to chapter 3 when, when he is in the temple, little Samuel's in the temple with a priest called Eli, and I want us to go through these verses here. This is starting with verses 1 and 2. If you're called of God, you're going to need to keep the Bible very close to you. Hope you have a hard copy and a digital app. How many got the Bible app on your phone? Use it. Here we go. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Eli was the priest. We would call him the pastor in these days. Now, in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare. How many know that you have a whole bunch of people at your school that don't get too many messages from God? 
They get a lot of messages from a lot of other places, but there's not a whole lot of students around them that are sharing the love, the joy, the peace of Jesus Christ with them. And your very life, your very attitude shares Christ. God will give you opportunities to share, but the anointing that is on you should be contagious and it should surround those that you are around. And visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, he was really old. Any of you guys have an old senior pastor? Don't raise your hand right now. He was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. He had gone to bed early. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. That's a whole other sermon. And Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Now in the Old Testament, the presence of God was symbolized and actualized by the very ark of the covenant. This was a, a golden box. You've seen pictures of it. And inside of it were Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant and the, the showbread. And this represented the presence of God and it manifested the presence of God and notice where Samuel was sleeping, in the tabernacle where God was, near the ark of God. And students, you need to be where the presence of God is. You need to be in your youth service every time you have youth service. You need to be in Sunday church, not in the back, but up front. You should be up front in church. You should be showing the older people how to worship God. You should not let anyone despise your youth because God's hand is upon you right now. You should be leaders in the church, not when you're 30, but right now. And Samuel was near the presence of God, and when you're near the presence of God, God's always calling, but when he's near you, you can hear the ringer and you can pick up. Suddenly the Lord called out, Samuel. Can you imagine? <laughs> Man, this is like an audible voice. I've never got that. I've got some real strong internal voices, but can you imaz imagine? I always think it's in the voice of Morgan Freeman. Samuel. <laughs> yes. He's probably like this. He was probably 13, 14. Yes, Samuel replied. <laughs> what is it? And the next verse says this. He got up and ran to Eli the priest. What are these words? Mm. You know, he even went to his pastor and said, here I am. Some of you need to go to your youth pastor and say, man, I, got, I feel like God's tugging me. Here I am. What can I do? Maybe God's calling you to be the next Billy Graham, the next Gary Davidson, the next Heath Corrales, the next Doug Everard, the next David Bright. But right now, you just go to your leader and you say, here I am. What can I do? Can I pick up chairs? Can I pick up trash? What can I do? Being a servant of God means that there is no task below you right? Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So Samuel did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? That was Mickey Mouse. Forgive me. I didn't call you, my son, Eli said. Go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. Some of you, God's going to speak to you today so very clearly. I've prayed over this day. So the Lord called a third time, and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. God is calling. Are you answering? God is calling you by name just like he did Samuel. Are you answering? answering. Listen, there's really, I, I summarize this, there's really four types of calls. Let me just summarize since we're going to on-ramp into some really specific calls later on today. So there's a salvation call. Everybody salvation call. God's calling everybody for that, okay? When Jesus was with the first disciples in John chapter one, and he said, follow me, and they begin to follow him, and he says to everyone, follow me, and there's a salvation call. If you're not right with God today, you gotta make yourself right by saying yes to God. He's calling you, right? So everybody say salvation call. I hope you've said yes. If you haven't said yes to salvation, today's the day of salvation. Then there's a service call. Everybody say service call. Not like getting your oil changed or something, but, but God calls us all to service, no matter who we are as followers of Christ, he calls us to service. So it might be a call to serve on the media team. It might be a call to be a Christian dentist. It might be a, a call to be a Christian governor. But there's a service call, and all of us get one of those, how we can serve the kingdom. But then thirdly, there's a sacred call. Everybody say sacred call. 
And that's a call specifically to church ministry, that God uses specific people who have a specific sacred call on their life to be pastors and youth pastors and children's pastors and evangelists and missionaries around the world. That those people that God gives a sacred call, he says, I want you to give up everything and follow me for the sake of the gospel. And I'm looking at a whole group of young people that have a sacred call on your life. I've seen it at camp. I've seen it in some of your youth groups. I've been to some of your churches, and you've been sitting up front praising God. And God has given you a sacred call. All you have to do is say yes, and he will lead and guide you. He will not give you the 17-page plan today. Why? Because it would scare you, and you might run. Because it's bigger than you. You just say, here I am today, and God will lead and guide every part of the journey. And Beyond that sacred call, then there's a specific call. So when I was called into ministry, I'll tell you in just a little bit how that happened. When there were some people around me, they felt like they were called to uh, Madagascar, or they were called to Cameroon, or they were called to Dublin. I I never got that geographical thing. Maybe some of you today are going to be called to Wakanda. I don't know. Maybe Dagobah. God is very specific with some people where they're supposed to go. And eventually he gets that with everybody. But maybe there's a specific call. I didn't know. I just thought I was supposed to be a pastor. And then, boy, I got to be a youth pastor. Some of the funnest days of my life were working for Pastor Phil. Jeff, you got the coolest job right now, uh, being that amazing leader. The best youth pastor Carbondale's ever had is right here. And uh, it's the truth. And I just, uh, I want you to know, if you don't have all the specifics, don't worry about it, because God will give that to you in time. Are you with me? I got to move on fast. So everybody say, God is calling. calling. Are you answering? Are you picking up? Because sometimes we just ignore it because we're a little afraid of where he might send us. Can I tell you, God will give you the desires of your heart. He's already wired you before you were born for that call. So he's not going to give you something that's just miserable. It might be challenging. It might be hard. But can I tell you from everything that's within me, when you say, here I am to the Lord, there is nothing more fulfilling than saying yes to Jesus. I got to keep going. Okay, second question. God is calling. Are you listening? Everybody say, are you listening? Are you listening? Man, some of you got off of Instagram when I said that. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Uh, when, I was a, when I was a kid growing up, we had a phone like this that hung on the wall. It was yellow, uh, 1978, 1979, uh, yellow, and it hung on the wall in our kitchen. And when we were eating dinner at night uh, for a long season, we would get a call every night about 5.30 or 6, and we didn't have caller ID, so my dad would pick up the phone, and he would say, hello there. And somebody on the other line would say, is up. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, is uh uh-oh there? And my dad would say, you have the wrong number. And he would hang up. And about three minutes later, the phone would ring. Hello? Yes, is uh uh-oh there? Now, to this day, we don't know if someone was pranking us. We don't know if this was a crazy uncle. We don't know who it was. But every night, about 6 o'clock, we would get a call from Uh uh-oh. So my dad stopped answering the phone, but it would ring incessantly. We didn't even have answer machines. Like, this is when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, right? So a long time ago. And so then my dad would get frustrated. Hello? Is uh uh-oh there? My dad would get frustrated and hang up the phone. Finally, my dad did this. The phone rang, 6 o'clock at dinner, and the guy on the other end said, is uh uh-oh there? And my dad said, yes. This is uh uh-oh. How can I help you? I've been waiting for your call. The guy freaked out, hung up, and we never got a call from that guy ever again, right? Uh, True story. God is answering, are you listening? Look what happened to Samuel here in 1 Samuel chapter 3. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again, and if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed, and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. God's calling Are you listening? Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I'm going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. So Eli had some PKs. They were rotten. Uh, If you're a PK, make sure you stay close to God because his kids didn't. And so God was going to do some things, and that's a, a whole other story. I just want you to see that Samuel needed to listen to 
the voice of God. Now, God speaks in five different ways, and if you're taking notes, here's the way that God speaks. First of all, he speaks through the Bible. God always speaks through the Bible, and you can be reading through the the Bible, happened to me this week, and something just pops off the page, and God speaks to your heart. You can be reading about Samuel, and and God can just say, hey, you're another Samuel. God's calling. Are you listening? Are you listening to what God has for you? And God will never contradict the Word of God. So if you have someone or your spirit says, you know, like, hey, you need to go rob a bank so you can pay for Bible college, that's not God talking to you, right? Because it goes against, uh, although you're tempted if you're in Bible college because it's so expensive, but that's not God. So God speaks through the Bible, right? Okay, number two, God speaks through prayer. When you are in prayer, it's speaking to God, but it's also listening to God. So God speaks through the word of God, the Bible. He speaks through prayer. And similar to number two, he speaks through his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always speaking to you. If, are you listening? My, my dad is a Cleveland Indians fan, now the Guardians. He's not happy about that. And so when I was a kid, we would listen to a Cleveland, Ohio radio station in Oklahoma, 90% static, but he would do his best to tune in to 3WE, I still remember the call letters, and Pink Franklin was the color commentator for the Cleveland Indians, and he would tune in. The Holy Spirit's always talking to you. Are you listening? Sometimes it's through a gift of the Spirit, through a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, a a discernment gift, but the Holy Spirit is always speaking. You have to listen. And then the Holy Spirit also speaks through his church. Everybody say the church. So number one is the Word of God, the Bible. Number two is in prayer. Number three, the Holy Spirit. And number four is the church. God speaks through his church. And I hope that the church is gathered here today and you're gonna hear from some amazing speakers and from some amazing leaders, even out in the commons area. And you're gonna hear God's voice through the church because the church is the body of Jesus Christ. And then number five, God speaks through circumstances. So when I was at a red light this morning coming over here to North Church, I was supposed to stop. I didn't want to stop, but my circumstances said there's a red light, you better stop. And so if God's called you to Indonesia, but you can't get a passport to Indonesia, visa, then how many know at least for right now, it's not God's will for you to go to Indonesia. When it's time, God will open the door. Are you following me? Doesn't mean we don't work hard, we work really hard, we're diligent, but God speaks through circumstances. Are you, are you following me with that? So if you didn't get it, it's this. God speaks through the word of God, through prayer, through the Holy Spirit, through the church, and through circumstances, and God speaks and calls through those five areas, and God is consistent, okay? So he's not gonna tell you one thing in the Holy Spirit, another thing in the church. You'll have to discern that. And if you have confusion, God has raised up great leaders and pastors to help you with that, to say, hey, I'm a little confused. Maybe God's leading me here, but I don't know where to go here. Are you with me? Okay, I gotta, I gotta keep moving. So God is calling, are you answering? I hope you're gonna answer today. God is calling, are you listening? And then number three, God is calling, are you obeying? Are you obeying? So when I was your age, I would go off to kids camp, and then I would go off to youth camp. My mom and dad aren't pastors, and so I didn't really know uh, anything about uh, full-time church ministry or, or those sacred gifts. And I went to, I can, t- I can take you to the spot at Turner Falls. It's the, it's the second pillar to the left. And I was just seeking God. I was at an altar, and God, through his Holy Spirit, spoke to me on that sacred call. I didn't get any specifics, but I felt like I was supposed to be a pastor. And I thought, there's no way. I wanted to make a lot of money in life. That was my goal, right? I, I kind of grew up on the wrong side of town, in the wrong neighborhood, went to the wrong school, all that. So I wanted to turn my, I worked really hard on grades. And, and so I wanted to make a lot of money. So I just didn't tell anybody. I knew God had spoken, but I wasn't telling anybody. So you know what? The next year I went back to camp, felt the same thing. And then I went to what we called youth convention back then, Convergence, and Jeannie Mayo spoke. And I felt the same thing as a teenager, but I wasn't gonna tell anybody. So I went to this thing we used to do called discipleship camp. And I felt it so strongly there that I made the mistake of telling my cousin who was there. So we go back home after camp and we're sitting around dinner next to the uh uh-oh phone. He didn't call that night. But my cousin, my cousin said, Daryl has an announcement to make. I thought, what is she talking about? Yeah, Daryl had something happen to him at camp and he needs to tell all of you. 
And I said, well, okay, like I kind of feel like I'm going to be a pastor. And after they all got up out of the floor because they were laughing so hard, none of them believed this would happen, right? I was, uh, I was in speech therapy as a kid. Uh, when kids were doing fun things in elementary school, I was going to speech therapy. And I was kind of a crazy, rowdy kid. I was always in a little bit of trouble. And so they thought, this will pass, like indigestion, right? Just go take some Pepto-Bismol, and this will pass. So I really didn't think anything of it. But can I tell you, once I said that to my entire family, where before I was feeling it, but I would always hide it, once I spoke it, I can tell you all these years later, somehow I never looked back. Mm. And if you're sensing the call of God, you got to tell somebody. For me, it was one of my best friends. She was my cousin. She was from right here in Oklahoma City. And I said, hey, listen, I got to tell you something. It was just so inside of me. I got to tell you. And it was the Holy Spirit that told her to say, we have an announcement to make. (laughs) That was the Holy Spirit. And then from then on, I could see how the Lord carved out the path uh, for ministry. Didn't know how, but I knew where I was supposed to go study. I didn't know anything. I don't know anything about ministry. Went to my youth pastor and said, hey, here I am. I don't have much to offer, but here I am. How can I help? What can I do? Man, he, he said, hey, why don't you preach? I was 16 years old. I preached this sermon on Thanksgiving. I believe it classifies as, I still have the notes, the worst sermon ever preached in history. I still have the notes. You pastors, take a, ch- take a chance on some students. Take a chance on them. Let them do something. Start with setting up chairs, staying late after you service and tearing down the chairs and helping your pastor be a servant because no matter where God calls you, he's calling you to be a servant. Are you obeying? Look at this last verse here. So Samuel told Eli everything. Samuel didn't hold anything back. That's what I'm asking of you all today. God's speaking. Would you answer? Would you listen? Would you obey? Would you not hold anything back? I don't know. I don't know where to go study. I don't know where to go to college. I don't know what school of ministry to go to. I don't know what Chi Alpha to go to. I don't, I don't, God will take care of all that. All you got to do is say, here I am. Well, I never know how to get a job. I never hold a, never know how to find a job or a youth pastor's job. Or I never know how to go find out how to be a missionary. God will take care of all that. When I, when I started uh, hanging out with people that were called to ministry, Rob McClure was the, the first one, and then other people. And, and somebody said to me early in my journey, they said, you know, you'll never get a job in ministry unless you send out like a thousand resumes. And you'll never get a raise in a church unless you just beg for it a lot. Now, I'm not real spiritual, but I'm stubborn. So I thought, I'm just going to find out if this is true or not. So to this day, I've never called up anybody looking for a job. I just said, Lord, I'm going to be faithful in wherever I'm at. You'll open up the doors. I've never asked anybody for a raise because that's not their department. That's God's department. He will always take care of you. Even when you're scratching your head, he always will take care of you because he's teaching some lessons in the way. So you don't have to worry about all that stuff. All you got to do is say, here I am. It's never going to be about titles. Never has been. It's never going to be about positions. It's always going to be about being a servant. There is no ladder to climb in ministry. There's only a stairwell to descend into servanthood. It's to be like Jesus, who came from heaven, the ultimate ladder, the humility we can't imagine, to walk a dusty earth, to save you and me out of a vault of hopelessness. And he's picked the cream of the crop. Some of you don't feel like it, but I look around the room, and I have more excitement about Oklahoma than I've ever had before, because I see God's call on you. Some of you haven't recognized it. Some of us have seen it for a long time. But God is going to call you to go to people who are trapped in a vault of hopelessness, of despair. They don't even know their identity anymore. They don't know their purpose. They don't know why they were created. And you've got the combination to the vault. It's John 3.16. And God is calling you. Would you just say, here I am? 
Would you say, here I am? Would you answer? Would you listen? Would you obey? Would you say, here I am?